guys welcome once again to my channel once you see me in my chair you know there is a gist for today my name is Emmanuel engineer Emmanuel and but my handle is Nanaya Ekiluki I would want to ask you that I like your support and please like and subscribe give a comment and click on the notification share with your friends so that they can definitely also have a look and join in the discussion so what do I want to talk about today? Like you have seen in the caption, there is this a lot of arguments going on now on, on social media concerning the position of Ghana in, in Africa or West Africa in respect to Nigeria. And I've been having a lot of thought through it. And sometimes I get worried about how um, the whole narrative is being interpreted. And sometimes I feel that the actual ideas are not being brought about. So I decided to just join in the discussion today. Um, what, what, what do I think it's, it's the issue? You know, in 1983, Ghanaians were sent from Nigeria back to their country. So this is where we have the usual Ghana must go bag, where Ghanaians had to buy loads of it and come back to their country. And so it earned the bad name Ghana must go. And a lot of Ghanaians had to eventually come back to their country. Um, this situation um, caused a lot of um, discomfort for Ghanaians at the time. So they were wondering um, what they would do with their lives. Because at the time, Nigeria had a good economy. And then a lot of Ghanaians and I think other people from other parts of the, of the African continent came to Nigeria to survive and to do well. And nigerians at the time felt that their businesses was being taken over by Ghanaians, and they were not allowing them to enjoy the benefits of their country so they decided to let them go back to their country that was ghana now fast forward nigeria has been an african giant it has been its name for years fast forward a couple of years from 1983 all the way to 2021 2021 now every single day when we wake up we hear different news that says that ghana is the headquarters for twitter and there is a lot of noise why how did they get twitter's headquarters what did they do they don't have the numbers they don't have the traffic on twitter why do you have twitter in ghana we sleep and we wake up and we hear that um, germany has decided to establish a health center for pandemic control in ghana again skipping all other african countries and coming to ghana we woke up today to only to hear that the trade minister in Ghana has said that by the end of 2021, Hyundai and Kia are going to be established in Ghana. Much work for the young people going to be available. On top of it all, Nigeria presents 70% of children for examination. And it happens that Ghanaians few percentage for what WASI exams money to get all four titles that was given at the top we swept all the award and so there's a lot of you know confusion going on that the the Ghanaians we sacked from our country till now what is happening now you know this morning i was going through youtube as usual and then i saw a video from dr sheila um, i'm not gonna try the surname so you can see this video I'm talking about in the bio below. The link is be below in the bio. Uh, you can have a look at it and also share your thoughts. Uh, it was from this video I had this inspiration to, to do this, this video of mine. Now, Nigerians are saying that um, coming from the country of 1983, like I've said already, to 2021, there is something wrong with our country. For crying out loud, how is Ghana coming so close to us or possibly taking our position such that we are starting to consider a debate where we think they are the giants of africa <laughs> well i'm Ghanaian, and like i said in my previous video i travel a lot to nigeria so i understand the people and i love them i think that ghana is ghana is kind of getting a lot of attention but for ghana to take over the the title of um giants of africa then I think that there's a lot of discussion to be done. Because I see Dr. Sheila trying to um, bring the idea from her position, how she thinks that um, Nigeria is lacking behind. I share in that view. 
the very first day I arrived in Nigeria, I saw a country which I knew before coming as a very big country, powerful, only to enter the country to see a lot of things that, in my opinion, were not working. And I, I think that um, that is the first point of call. Uh, Nigeria as a country has everything, has the prospect in the future and was thought to gonna be a very powerful country. So what has gone wrong? Of course, the people are always part of it, but the people that drive the country are the ones that always cause these challenges. Ghana currently, we have a lot of issues going on. In fact, we don't even have continuous power flow and we sometimes don't have water and stuff like this. But we still have some effort from our leaders, even though there is so much going wrong and we expect so much from them. Now, this is what I'm, I'm trying to bring across. I have observed that since our president, um, Dr. Kwame Nkrumah, coming through to Jerry John Rawlings, to Professor Atta Mills, to um, John Ejekum Kufo, to um, John Mahama and to Nana Akufuadu. All these presidents, no matter what the situation was, um, did something good for the country. We could highlight corruption and all that um, in their times of all of them, but every single one decided to leave a kind of legacy that we'll celebrate. Um, how, how about in Nigeria? Have the leaders got to a point where they want to um, do something to leave as a legacy? Up until we get a system in the country where people are trying to um, give their best as a people and leave a legacy, there's always going to be this tussle of losing your position. And the people need to, to, to arise. The people need to stand and 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 defend what is theirs because you have nowhere to go than Nigeria and I have nowhere to go than Ghana. I've traveled a lot, but I always come back to Ghana because this is blood and this is where I come from. And as much as I love Nigeria, I can never take Nigeria as my country. And at this point, I want to just try and bring a point across to my Ghanaian brethren and sisters. Um, Nigeria used to be a very powerful country. But a lot of things over the time was taken for granted. And now I see when I go to Nigeria, I see a country where the people are taken for granted. <laughs> no matter what they do, they don't really care what the government wants to do is what they do. And I feel that it is, it's passionate to me because I don't feel Nigeria is a different country. I feel that it's all part of one place where we are trying to work together. And up until Nigeria begins to take its stand as the giants of Africa and compete up with Ghana, Ghana is going to relax again and we are going to be like Nigeria for sure. We need to have Nigeria coming up to be a very strong country economically, in education, and, and socially, politically, everything. Nigeria needs to be strong again. This is at this time, Ghana will be able to really come close to excellence because now Ghana is just getting ABC coming through and no one is really competing against them. But when Nigeria is up there, then once you get here, Ghanaians want to also come close. So we begin to put a lot of pressure to our government and eventually we are going to all keep rising. But if only Ghana is going up, then I think there's a problem. And this is why I want to add my voice to the fact that Nigeria has a lot of potential to easily rise up and it is not too late. It is not destroyed. Nigeria should come up to let Ghana struggle and let Ghana strive for the best. And at this point, again, I want to advise my Ghanaian people. There is a tendency that if we start relenting and relaxing on our leadership and don't keep putting the right pressures that we do on social media with, with the right demonstrations, if we don't speak up and we begin to sit down and relax and think that we are doing good and we have this year and we have um, Kia establishing and we have um, VW since last year and you know we begin to think that we have all these things here eventually Ghana is gonna be complacent and we're gonna die up because naturally the African is always trying to be corrupt and steal money here and there so if we fail to send the right signals and the right pressure around we are not we are gonna lose our position as well the position we've got into now that Nigeria uh, loves and other countries love and people are envious about I have a lot of friends in Nigeria friends who would call me and friends who would spend time with me on phone and there is so much frustration in Nigeria I mean Chief Uzoma calls me a friend of mine and says that he wants to he cannot um, establish digital money anymore in Nigeria his own money he can do what he wants 
and so he wants to start bringing funds to Ghana. Now, know that Chief Zoma started keeping funds in Ghana two years ago when I met him. He opened an account here and he has money that he keeps in Ghana because he feels that his the value of his currency is not strong enough. I personally feel that that is, not, that is misplaced because Nigeria is a very powerful country. And if Nigeria decides to wake up today, the whole of the world will run. Because look all over the world. Achievers are Nigerians when it comes to Africa. I see people doing great things even through to Hollywood. And they're all Nigerians. Nigerians are doing so well for their country. I think it is time that focus is given to the country. All the people in diaspora, all the people back home, come and give your quota to the country and begin to bring the right competition so that Ghana becomes the best. And if we become the giant of Africa, good, I'm a Ghanaian, I'm so happy. But we need the right push, we need the right direction and do not slack and let Nigeria be where it is. I don't want to create hatred. I don't want to create envy. I just want to create love. I want us to come together as one people because I feel that there is a connection between Ghana and Nigeria which we should not um, overlook. Over the years we've done this comparison as long as I can remember uh, when I was a child in the movies, in music, now in governance. I think that we need to wake up as a people and not see the competition of Ghana and Nigeria but begin to use it as a people to bring um, accountability to our leaders and bring responsibility to our leaders and bring happiness to our people and let the generation that will follow us come to meet a Ghana and a Nigeria that is good enough. I think that this has been good. It's been good um, having this discussion with you. I want to see what you think in the comment section below. And I'll be there to respond and add to answer your criticisms and your comments and your additions. I hope that we come together as a people and love each other. And with this love, build together a Ghana and a Nigeria. Because at the end of the day, that is all we have. And at the end of the day, we are not taking any arguments or fights how better anyone is to anywhere. It's to make Africa proud and begin to have a bargaining power in this world we are in. Thank you very much for subscribing, for liking, for commenting, and for sharing it with your friend. And I, I hope that next time when there's another video, you'll be here so that we can have another discussion. Have a nice day and always remember I love you. Bye-bye.